G'day there guys, Marky here, and welcome back to another episode of r slash relationship advice. I do hope you enjoyed today's stories, now sit back, relax, chuck a prawn to the barbie, and let's get right into it. Posted by user NoGuard5122, titled, My girlfriend blames me for not stopping her going home with another guy. I want to break up. What do I do? So I, 22 male, and my girlfriend, 24 female, of 4 years, and some friends went nightclubbing a couple of days ago. It wasn't a heavy night, but she did get quite drunk. About halfway through the night, she came up to me outside, after disappearing for a while, holding hands with an older man and stated that she was going to go to the toilet with him. They both came back about 5 minutes later, but she ignored all my attempts to get her to come with me. They both had their phones out like they were exchanging numbers, and she just completely refused to come home with me. When I finally got her attention, I told her to go away, and I went home alone. I checked her location when I got home, and saw she was at someone else's house in a totally different part of town, nowhere that she or I know anyone. I found out the following day that it was the same guy's house, but she said she left immediately and that nothing happened between them, whilst also saying that she doesn't remember most of the night. She profusely apologized at first and was crying on the phone to me about the fact that she can't lose me, but we met for coffee the next day and she said that I should have forced her to come with me and that I'm to blame for compromising our relationship by letting it happen. I now feel like I've done wrong and I should have stopped her. Edit. She also threatened to hang herself. Is this something that I should tell her parents about or is that not my place? In the comments, Raga Jaga says... The first sign to dump her ass was when she appeared holding some guy's hand after disappearing for a while and then effed off to the toilets with him alone. She cheated. God knows how many times in one night. If she's that upfront and cold about it, it's 10,000% not the first time either. If something isn't working, it won't work. It's actually not that tough to decide to break up with her. Dump her, block her, call her parents about the suicidal threat, and then don't look back. Block, ignore, move on. If you had forced her, there would be drama of a different kind that she would now be blaming you for. She is irresponsible, untrustworthy, and manipulative. Do you want to further enable these things by giving her another chance? Ah yes, the sweet song of a narcissist. Either way, it's your fault. If you would have stopped her, then she would have just said that you're abusive and controlling. So much so, she can't even just have friends and will F the guy out of spite. Ghost out as fast as you can, while covering all your bases of not getting screwed over. Record any and all conversations with her after the fact. I've unfortunately had run-ins with these creatures. There is no salvaging this. Cut your losses and run before she really decides to F with you. Update. I went to speak to her yesterday. She has said that she is willing to change and get therapy and fight for our relationship. I said the line must be drawn somewhere and broke it off. I've spoken to her mum today and told her about the suicide threats she made, which she was horrified to hear. Both her and my girlfriend are adamant that she was not unfaithful to me, and part of me does believe that, however, I also never believed that she would come up to me holding another man's hand. Either way, it sounded like her and her mum blame me for breaking it off, but I felt like I had no other choice. I did not want to, but I felt like I had to for my own sake. There is the argument that no matter what, I should have stopped her from going home with that man, because who knows what could have happened. But I also know that I tried my best in the situation to get her to come home, and I was of the opinion that she had decided to cheat on me, and I wasn't going to stop that. I haven't always been the perfect boyfriend, and perhaps I haven't been there for her at times when she did need me, but I know I have never and would never do what she did. I think I need to give myself permission to say enough is enough. No matter how much you love someone, if it's sacrificing your own mental health as it has been for me recently, then it's time to call it a day. I feel heartbroken and have been filled with guilt and regret. I'll be okay, right? Yeah, I think you'll be okay, OP. You kind of just have to give these things time and weather the storm. It's best that you get away from them as soon as possible, and it's great that you cut ties. It's just sad and pathetic that they're both trying to gaslight you when she clearly cheated. It's so obvious, how are you going to convince me that you didn't? Anyway, everything will be okay, OP, and I hope you're okay from here on out. In the comments, PhantomUser666 says, It's for the best. She definitely cheated. 
Take away what you can mentally and move on. Like, who even cares if she cheated? The way she handled the disagreement was enough for me. Yeah, the infidelity is just the icing on the cream pie, which she most certainly did. Yet somehow OP is to blame here, according to her and her flying monkey of a mother. Get the hell out of here with that noise. OP, you dodged a major bullet here. If you have to stop your partner from cheating on you, end the relationship then and there. 100%. A relationship does not involve the responsibility to stop your partner from being an asshole. The responsibility always lies with themselves. And now onto the final update. Kind of just rehashes the story but rewrites it a little bit. Me and my girlfriend of four years and some friends went nightclubbing a couple of days ago. It wasn't a heavy night but she did get quite drunk despite us just recently talking about her limits with alcohol. About halfway through the night, she came up to me outside, after disappearing off for a while, holding hands with an older man, and stated that she was going to the toilet with him, behind a building, not the actual toilet. They both came back about five minutes later, but she ignored all of my attempts to get her to come with me. They both had their phones out like they were exchanging numbers, and she just completely refused to come home with me. Rightly or wrongly, I wasn't going to physically remove her from the situation. I checked her location when I got home and saw that she was at someone else's house in a totally different part of town. I found out the following day that it was the same guy's house, but she said she left immediately and that nothing happened between them. She profusely apologized at first and was crying on the phone to me about the fact that she can't lose me, but we met for coffee the next day and she said that I should have forced her to come with me and that I'm to blame for compromising our relationship by letting it happen. A couple of days later, she turned up at my house, despite me telling her not to, telling me that she was going to hang herself and that she had taken a load of drugs. My friend overheard all of this and saw that she had driven off, having stated that she was on drugs. A wild goose chase ensued with us trying to get her to stop. Thankfully she did, and we took her home. I felt as if that episode completely took away from the hurt and pain that I felt from her going home with that man. I also feel I would never have forgiven myself if I hadn't tried to stop her committing, and I am angry at her for that, rightly or wrongly. She says that she didn't mean to drag my friends into the situation, but she genuinely felt suicidal in the moment. I do think she is genuinely remorseful, and she has since begun counselling, but ultimately the damage is done. I have since broken up with her, but she's refusing to let me find a replacement tenant for our flat that we only just began renting together. We're in the UK. What on earth am I supposed to do? Honestly, OP, if you can, just cut yourself off of that lease as fast as possible. There's obviously going to be some form of compensation needed for that, but the long-term damage to you financially and emotionally, potentially physically with this woman, is not worth uh, saving some money. Cut ties and run far, far away as soon as you can, is my advice. In the comments, the 95th says, Contact your agency or landlord. There is a nominal fee for changes to the tenancy agreement, which can remove you as a tenant. Estate agents deal with this on a daily basis. It's easier for them to remove you as a tenant for a fee, often half a month's rent, than it is to deal with you just walking away and not paying. You guys are young. I recommend talking to her and telling her it's over and that you guys need to be adults about this and speak to the landlord. It's going to be tough, but she needs to learn her lesson about how she treats people that she supposedly loves. About the whole threatening suicide thing, it's only for attention. I have known quite a few people that have done it and it's usually the ones that don't talk about it that do it. My one friend joked about it sometimes, but he never said, I'm just gonna do it. If she doesn't like the consequences of her actions, maybe she needs to stop doing those actions. Partying and getting wasted can diminish any reasoning or ability to make good choices. If you do love this girl though, give her the ultimatum of drinking or you. She cannot have both. Imagine your girlfriend comes up holding a man's hand and then goes into the bathroom with him before literally ditching you to go home with him and still thinking she did not cheat. Lamau? Right? That's some insane denial right there. Deniers be denying. My ex-wife got drunk one night while she had the kids and my oldest called me panicking to tell me she was in the room with another man and wouldn't unlock the door. I was on speakerphone telling her to unlock the door for him and she wouldn't. Obviously because the other man was in there. Most of my family chose to believe it didn't happen until eventually she confessed. We caught her red-handed and they all chose denial to maintain the status quo. 
There is countless things I hate about cheaters, but their refusal to take accountability for their actions is probably on top of the list. Not only they make a conscious decision to cheat and hurt their partner in relationship, but they also have the audacity to turn around and act like poor victims who had no other choice but to go screw someone else. The audacity. I hope OP is able to sort his housing situation out as quickly as possible, because judging by her general behavior and the threat to harm herself, she sounds manipulative and could talk OP into taking her back. I hope not. Unexposed is by user Eternally13, titled, Today I messed up by mixing up the dates my wife and I had tickets to Taylor Swift's Eras Tour. This happened earlier tonight. Backstory. My wife loves Taylor Swift. We'd actually had one of our first dates at a Taylor Swift concert. She was so excited when the Eras Tour was announced because she had missed Taylor's last tour and hadn't seen her perform live since 2015. We were fortunate enough to get into the verified fan presale because I've purchased many of Taylor's albums on vinyl for my wife as gifts. As some of you may have heard, the presale was a shit show and we did not successfully get tickets. Looking for more tonight. We again were fortunate to get a second chance at purchasing tickets due to TM trying to save face. This time around, Ticketmaster didn't allow you to choose specific tickets, just the price range that you were comfortable with and they would choose the seats for you within a day or so. We successfully got tickets this time, and she was so pumped. We've been talking about it for weeks. She spent the previous day getting her outfit decided. We got a babysitter, my brother, I got someone to cover me at work. We drove an hour, got there an hour early, paid $60 for parking, walked three quarter miles to get to the stadium, waited in lines, got through security, get the tickets out. They don't scan. We try to sort out why, and discover they're for yesterday. We tried talking to several staff about our predicament, my F up, to no avail. Of course, they're completely sold out. Only option would have been to buy $1,000 per piece tickets off the secondary market. Message Ticketmaster, sorry, your F up. So now she won't talk to me, understandably. I'm in the doghouse. No idea how I'm ever getting out. Pray for me. In the comments, Darby Nerd says, I would love to have your level of confidence to just assume a concert date and not anxiety check the tickets 500 times before the night of the show. I was flying out to Cancun last Sunday. Saturday, I checked my passport, as I did when I booked my trip. It said it expired in 2019. Q, massive panic attack. I'm effed. It's Saturday. There is nothing I can do. I'm just going to assume my wife will go without me pull my wife's passport, hers expired in 2014. Then I realized I was looking at the issue date, which has the word expires right below it. I collect myself, but I can relate to the massive panic that OP must have felt when he realized his screw up. How the hell do you spend several hundreds, if not thousands of dollars on tickets, and you can't even get the date correct? Ticketmaster also emails you many times leading up to the concert, prepare for your upcoming concert on X date, or things to know for your upcoming concert. This part puzzles me. I went to a concert two weeks ago and got two or maybe three emails reminding me to add my tickets to the wallet and the things to know email. Did OP get none of them? Ignore or delete them? This reminds me of a friend of mine. Every year he goes to Wacken, metal festival in Germany. One day we were in the queue and all tickets were blue. His was green. He didn't care, he just thought that it was a different ticket or so. When he tried to get in, he hears, this is from last year. Do you have from this year? He sits and starts sobbing, as his actual ticket is around a thousand kilometers from there. Luckily, he manages to talk with a box office manager that found his payment ticket. Luckily, wasn't a resale ticket, and he manages to get in. Update. After a long, quiet car ride home and a long night on the couch, I took the time to read everyone's comments and reflect on my massive mistake. The upset was palpable and I knew there was very little that I'd be able to do to make things right. Flowers? Not even close. A bracelet? She would never want to wear it for risk of being reminded of this horrible night. A lot of you suggested buying tickets to a future concert. Only thing is the last US show is this weekend in LA, and they're super effing expensive. After that, Taylor is heading international for the next year. Thanks for coming down under Taylor Swift, uh, see you in February. 
This did, however, make me realize that whatever the cost, I should consider it. Having to live with this for however long she'd decide to keep me around felt like a certain hell. So I started doing the math. Would it make sense to plan a trip to Paris next year and see her perform there? How about a quicker trip to Mexico City? After analysis, most of her tickets were coming out to about the same on the secondary market, $1,000 per. This sort of narrowed it down. I should just buy tickets for this weekend in LA. I'd rather have her experience the show earlier than later, and leaves less room for other mistakes and interruptions anyways. I called her best friend that lives in LA and let her in on my mistake. She audibly gasped, asked her if she was free this weekend, and would want to escort my wife to the show. She said she'd love to. In exchange, she'd handle all the heavy lifting in LA, picking the wife up from the airport, driving to the show, bed for the night at her place, etc. She rightly suggested that I should run it by the wife before just going forward with it. I broached the subject and broke our silence with, So, have you considered divorce yet? This got a laugh and a reply of, Not seriously. I told her the plan and she was ecstatic. However, she was concerned about the expense. I did my best to assuage her concerns and eventually she acquiesced. I headed over to Southwest and StubHub, triple checked the dates, purchased concert tickets for Saturday and plane flights from San Fran to LA. So that's the plan. My mum is babysitting on Saturday, the wife flies down on Saturday morning, friends pick her up, they see the best show of their lives, and she flies back on Sunday. What started as just a horrible, horrible experience can hopefully turn into a funny story and a once-in-a-lifetime adventure for her and her friend. The mood in the house changed instantly. She already let me off the hook for the attempt alone. We love each other very much, and this wouldn't have affected us in the long run, but I certainly did not want this held over my head by her or family members. I wanted to make it right, even if it started stinging the pocketbook. Thank you all for the comments and advice. It actually did help a lot. I needed some laughs and encouragement. We'll see how this weekend goes. I may have another update for you on Monday. Q&A from previous post. How come you didn't check the dates on the tickets, like, 500 times? OP says, I think I have a theory for what happened here. When the presale originally happened through Ticketmaster, we were unable to successfully get tickets, and I was looking for Saturday the 29th, but when Ticketmaster gave us second chance at tickets, they didn't let you select the seats, and I guess the date. They just issued tickets for you in your approved price range. Obviously now, they issued them for Friday, and I just always assumed it was Saturday, as that was the date that I was attempting to buy them for. I immediately put the show in our shared calendar, and never thought about it otherwise. Didn't you get the reminder emails? They send loads. OP replies, they did, and I've since gone back and reread them all. I guess the issue is that I received so many emails from them that I didn't read any of them closely. About a month prior to the show, I added the tickets to my Google wallet, but the day of the week was nebulous to me at that point, and I was just trusting what was already in my calendar. Isn't your wife just as responsible? No, not really. I handle most all of the planning in our household. I've handled weeks long, months long, local and international trips with dozens of hotels, train tickets, restaurant reservations, etc., and never had a serious problem. Logistics is what I do for a living as well, so she trusted me as she always had. The only responsibility she has in it is loving and trusting me. I can't believe she's not talking to you for just a concert. She wasn't really not talking to me, but she was understandably upset. It was a lot to process, months of build-up, the excitement all week, all the media and posts about how much everyone is loving the show, thinking you're going to have an awesome night, and a rare date night, and then boom! Gone. I get it, completely. She needs some space and to come to terms with a loss. Can you try to message Taylor Swift for help? Yeah, would love a little help here. Anyone got to connect? In the comments, Trivalever says, Glad you're able to fix your mistake and what a wonderful way to do so. Good job. OP replies, Thank you. Glad that the ordeal is over. I'll be even more relieved when this weekend goes off without a hitch. Ambitious Rub says, My brother-in-law planned a proposal trip for my sister years ago, had the hotel prepare a proposal space, chocolates and roses petals in the room, and he effed up the flight time and got to the airport an hour late. My worst nightmare of flight time was back in 2021. Went to visit friends and found family down in Austin. 
My mom called me the night before my flight, and I found out my flight was at 6pm, not 6am, like I thought I scheduled it for. Only bad thing was I had to pay $5 extra to the parking lot for the extra 12 hours. That's why 24 hour reign supremacy. 6 o'clock and 18 o'clock are two completely different times, and so are midnight and 12 o'clock. I have a few flight time troubles, but mistaking AM and PM was never one. Wandering Light says, And now T Swift just recently announced that she was adding more dates, so poor OP could have probably gotten cheaper tickets to a different show. Too late. You had to be registered by Saturday to even be eligible, and I didn't see it until yesterday. As my mum would say, day late and a dollar short. If OP put the tickets on his Google wallet in advance, wouldn't his phone have been blowing him up all day with reminders? My phone reminds me around an hour before every event at a minimum, sometimes more than 12 hours in advance. Example, flights when I put them in my phone wallet. He may just be one of those people who have so many apps and get so bombarded with notifications that they stop paying attention to them. Or he may have seen the notification and just dismissed it without reading it thoroughly, thinking it was notifying him of the concert coming up tomorrow when it was really today. And that's where I'm going to end today's episode, guys. I do hope you enjoyed. If you did, let me know what you thought of it in the comments down below, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.